Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning and welcome. Uh, this is a, a great morning. Um, yesterday and the last couple days, we've had the opportunity to interact and, and chat informally through a number of different venues here on campus. And uh, University Week, I understand, had a number of, of uh, different uh, turns to allow you to see what your fellow, fellow faculty are, are doing and to expand your base. And I appreciate that diversity in the pre presentation of data. I also had the opportunity to meet with both you the faculty and you, the staff, over the last couple of days to talk a little bit about what we're doing and how we're doing here at uh, ULM. It's a very exciting time, and I'm, uh, I'm very happy to have the privilege of uh, speaking on your behalf uh, to tell everyone about our university. And this morning and last night, as I began to review data that was being ex extracted by Lisa Miller and Dr. Richters and putting putting it all together by Lindsay Wilkerson. It really is amazing to me the progress we're making here at the university in this short period of time. And I'm going to share a lot of that with you this morning. But before we get started, I'd like to uh, recognize uh, several of our legislators who have come to uh, share the good news with us and uh, show their support. First of all, Senator Neil Reiser, one of our alums, um, chairman of the Revenue and Fiscal Affairs, and He's the gentleman that spearheaded us getting our funding for uh, uh, Sandal Hall. And Dr. Frank Hoffman, everyone knows the voice of the Warhawks. Dr. Hoffman is also an alum and uh, uh, is always active. In fact, he's become such an advocate they won't even allow him to speak on behalf of ULM down at the legislature because they know he's so in, uh, uh, tainted. And then uh, uh, <laughs> Representative Jay Morris over here, and you're welcome to join these gentlemen. Representative Morris, but, his <laughs> but uh, Representative Morris calls several times during the session to ask how certain bills will impact the university, as do all of our legislators. And I want to say many of them are down in Baton Rouge at the uh, uh, Appropriation Committee meeting, uh, budget uh, committee on the budget, and uh, they would certainly be here. As you know, they are always very supportive of the university. We have a great. Uh, legislative uh, delegation. So I want to thank you for being here and thank them for where they are, uh, you know, speaking on our behalf. So let's get started this morning and go. Thank you. This is the fourth time I've had the pleasure of telling you about our university. And this, this year takes on a little different tone. And as we go along, I think you'll see that. Uh, but all of it, all of what's happened here is the result of your hard work and dedication through some very difficult times. Uh, That video will be seen, it was seen across the state and all during the Miss Louisiana pageant recently and will be used a lot in this coming year. Um, you know, Donna Bernard and the Office of Public Information, Lisa Miller, Enrollment Services and all of them were contributed to that, so I appreciate their efforts. Well, there we go. The, uh, we celebrated several days ago the, uh, the awarding of the Foundation's uh, Awards of Excellence. And these individuals, you know them, uh, they have contributed greatly to the university as those who have won before them have, as those of you who are here every day that just uh, have not yet been recognized. But uh, I want to thank these uh, faculty members and congratulate them for their hard work and dedication to the various areas. Here. 
These are accomplishments. I try to point these out, and I make sure that I tell everyone, whoever will stand long enough for me to tell them about all of the things going on here and what we're being identified for. And, uh, of course, you saw some of those in the video. We were identified or uh, designated by the Board of Regents and the Board of Supervisors as the Center for Precision Agriculture. And um, the work with this little plane here, this little drone, is getting a great deal of attention. And uh, Senator Thompson has formed a, a Senate resolution, or uh, had a Senate resolution passed that they will study the use of these drones in agriculture. And of course, we're, we're on the cutting edge of that. Uh, Senator Reiser's part at Agriculture Committee also, uh, Senate Agriculture. We're very excited what's going on. Uh, Paul Karlowitz, David King, um, let's see, Dr. Panny, oh, Sean Chenowitz, and several others have been involved all summer in a research project, a, a test on a local farm to ascertain how these planes can be used uh, to increase the productivity of agriculture in our region, which is so important. Uh, the one that I found, you know, I think the most intriguing was being named Louisiana's most underrated university. When I came here three and a half years ago, I made a comment that said, we were the best kept secret in Louisiana. And there were people who took exception to that. But the reality is it was the case. You know, we were well known in North Louisiana. In South Louisiana, we weren't as well known. We were known for pharmacy. That's pretty much it. And uh, for an independent group to identify us as underrated, I think is uh, very important. And it allows us the impetus to jump off and, and make sure that we are no longer underrated. It's also, um, you know, interesting to note that in other states who those underrated schools were in, in the other states. In Texas, it was Texas A&M. In Oklahoma, it was Oklahoma. Florida was Florida. Certainly, I'm not going to stand here and say that we compete with those institutions. But the fact that, you know, an institution can be a research or a land grant and be underrated, for us to achieve this, and I think it is an achievement to, for these guys to recognize us in that capacity, gives us an opportunity to uh, really show off a little bit. 100% passage rate in nine of the 11 College of uh, Health and Pharmaceutical uh, Sciences. It's amazing. Uh, the, uh, the city, along with the university, was looked at uh, top, uh, in the 50 top uh, most affordable colleges. That's big for us because as people read these, these ratings and information, those who are not local can see that it's a bargain to come here and get an education if they choose to uh, leave their home. Uh, certainly, the water ski team brings a great deal of attention to our university, as does uh, the fishing team down at the bottom. Uh, what I'm very proud of is soccer, volleyball, men's basketball, and track. Uh, had some uh, national academic awards this year. Basketball, uh, second straight. Um, academic achievement or academic award for the Sun Belt Conference. So the work in academics is moving on through athletics and throughout the university. So thank you all for that. Um, these are some of our new faculty. Get to know them. As you can see, as you look at them throughout, uh, they're dispersed across all of the colleges. So uh, it was a very good feeling to know that we could hire people this year. You know, we're not starting this discussion off talking about what we're going to have to do to stay moving. This is a positive step, and uh, some staff members uh, that will be available to assist you in uh, helping facilitate the business of the university as well as teaching our students. Uh, a little bit about our facilities. Uh, Walker Hall, as you know, had a fire two years ago. It is, the, the damage has been repaired. It was not a total renovation, as some thought it might be. But it, uh, it has restored this building uh, to a usable state to where we can conduct classes in there. And um, arts education and sciences will be housed in there. So very uh, happy to have Walker back online. Uh, through a donation as well as assistance from the Facilities Corporation, uh, the new turf in Warhawk uh, Stadium is, um, is new and ready to go for the first game. It's beautiful if you hadn't been there. You need to go by and just take it a look. It's very soft. I was so amazed at how soft this thing is. And hopefully it'll bring us good luck this season. Um, you know, Athletic Director Wickstrom, um, I want to applaud him for uh, 
securing the, the funds for this as well as others that you'll see down the road. Uh, Sandal, you know, again, we all should be so excited about Sandal. This is going to be an amazing building. It's going to serve every division within the university. Uh, we expect it to be open uh, by spring of 2016. Uh, once again, thank the legislators for, you know, uh, moving this one through. This one was on our capital outlay want list for 12 years. So this group of legislators and their colleagues were able to get us that building. Uh, it had been dormant, as you know. It was ugly coming into campus. It is truly going to be spectacular as you drive in the Northeast Drive and see the boulevard in our buildings and in our campus. Uh, the International Student Center, again, the donation of Eric and Linda Liu is coming up. If you drove in Northeast Drive, it's coming along very nicely. Again, all private funds. Interestingly, uh, you know, it's, it's, it get, it's getting a lot of attention. Our international faculty, I've met with them uh, to talk about the formulation of a committee to begin to discuss the sensitivities that we will all uh, need to know as it relates to uh, our international students and how this facility will help us grow that population. Uh, the ski team will get a new facility. Uh, I'm sure you share with me this is probably long overdue. If you drive down to Seard and you look to your left, you know, it looks pretty raggedy out there. Um, so this facility hopefully will begin um, uh, construction in October and be completed by the spring when they uh, return for their practices. So we're, we're real happy about that. And the Malone Stadium Fieldhouse in the north end zone area. Uh, again, uh, Brian Wickstrom has been, and his staff have been aggressively seeking private funds to uh, construct this. And we look forward to the, the uh, groundbreaking on this in the near future. It'll add another uh, very attractive feature to our campus. Uh, this, is, this is it. This is what we're all about here. You know, let's look at these numbers carefully because I think that you know, our recruiting staff has done an amazing job. You've all done an amazing job. We've continued to discuss the importance of building up the academic uh, ability of our students. And here's our freshman class so far uh, this year. Uh, of course, we're not finished registering, as you know, uh, but 24 ACT, up 1.6 points from last fall's class. Uh, 64 30 plus ACTs. Uh, average GPA, 3.51. 135 with a 40 GPA. And tops percentage for our faculty, I mean, excuse me, our freshman class, 86% are on tops. Now, I'm going to tell you, that says a lot for this university. It says a lot for you. It says a lot for our strategy to bring this level of students to a small university in northeast Louisiana. You all deserve a round of applause, so please. <laughs> this is amazing. This is really amazing. Now, we'll have some challenges that we'll talk about a little further on, but we're getting a much better product for you to work with. And I think that it's going to really show in some, you'll start to see some numbers uh, in just a second. Uh, this change is shifting, as you see. Uh, if you remember last year, we talked about the first year that uh, we had uh, less students coming from this region than we had from out of the region. And that trend is growing. Uh, last, you know, we had 54% from outside the region. Um, actually, in uh, 2013, I think that was 52%. So that trend continues to grow as we reach further for those uh, top students to come to ULM. Um, here are strategies. Now, this is our EULM program, which began in the, under Paula Thornhill and will kick off in earnest in January. We realize it's very difficult to recruit students. It's very expensive to recruit them. The opportunities for this university to grow will certainly lie in this program of uh, online education. It's nothing new. We have 26 or 27 online programs now. Uh, we have not really framed this program in a true online style. So this past uh, spring, uh, Dr. Panny and Paula and several others started doing some benchmarking of other successful online programs. And uh, what they learned are some of the things that an online student looks for. Eight-week models as opposed to the six weeks, I mean 16 weeks, excuse me. Uh, academic advising will be different. 
their retention will have uh, red flags to, to, to be able to early warn a student that's getting into trouble, to advocate for them, and of course to support. There are faculty, there are staff that are being employed to man this system um, as an independent unit, uh, and this is not budgeted in the operating fund. This will uh, be charged with operating on its, uh, excuse me. Mrs. Bruno, it's your daughter. <laughs> so the EULM has a, a, an entity into itself, and Paul is excited, the staff is excited, and we look forward to that causing us to grow. Their goal is 500 additional students in the spring. Currently, we have about 1,600 that are in online. Uh, so Paula's working and her staff's working to bump that to, to 500. We see this program having multiple uh, benefits. Of course, the first one is uh, exposing more students to the quality of ULM. But number two, we also realize that um, the legislature last year gave us a different tuition structure for online education as it related to first uh, in-person, face-to-face instruction. Uh, by gaining these 500 students, uh, the university could potentially have a million and a half extra resources on those 500 students. Um, of course, we'd like to see 2,000 over the next three years or so, and if so, that will begin to produce more revenues to put back in the operating fund and invest in our faculty and our staff and our university. So this is a twofold thing, expanding the reach of the university and expanding the resources available for us to be successful. Uh, retention is an uh, initiative. Uh, let's see, Dr. Richter's and uh, has been pretty much spearheading a committee of deans and other support staff to talk about what are we doing. Uh, retention has always been a challenge for all universities in Louisiana. Uh, ULM freshman uh, first to second year retention has hovered around 69 percent for a number of years. There have been some spikes up and a little spike down here and there. But if you look at the charts, they're all around 69%. Really, we'd love to see that somewhere around 80%. And as the as quality of these students become better, we hope that they, we'll start to see some of that as a natural progression. But we know that there are things that we can do to help. Particularly keep in mind, with 54% of your freshmen now coming from outside the region, that presents some additional challenges for us. And those challenges include homesickness, the ability to connect, having someone on campus as a mentor or someone they know they can speak with, those are all important factors in making a student feel at home. So advising will be uh, increased and you know, Barbara Michaelides and the Student Success Center will be involved in early alert program uh, for our freshmen and our scholarship students and our African American students who Dr. Uh, Brumfield has proposed a program for that we will also use and what we call a Hawk program. These are students that uh, technically need more work and um, we're designing a program that works with those students that we may have called uh, at risk. And much of this I'm sure has already been discussed with you at your college level, but you'll be hearing more of that as it is. This is our, our big initiative for this year. Uh, teaching and learning, grades first, reporting, more testing or at least testing in an expedited fashion through the semester so we know if these students are at risk. Uh, in many cases, uh, grades are not available till after midterm. Once we get to that point, it's, it's very difficult to save a student, as you all well know. And then customer service on the staff and hall side, making sure we know where to send a student or a parent if they come on campus, not move them around campus to four different offices before we know where they belong. So that's something we've got to work on because it's no different than you going into a store and asking for a particular item and you'd be sent to, you you're being sent to three or four different areas. It becomes frustrating and your experience is not positive. We need to change that. This is a 5% increase in retention and what it will do for us financially over the four years that student is here. Okay? In the first year, if in 14-15 we increase our retention factor by 5%, we will increase the revenues here by 400, nearly $475,000, okay? 
Let me put it in, a, in, in what $475,000 can do. That's nearly a 2% salary adjustment. Okay? That's what $475,000 could do. Uh, in addition to, or it can provide more scholarships, it can provide more services, travel for faculty, professional development. If that carries on throughout that student's term, uh, it will amount to almost 2.3 million. That's at current levels of enrollment, and that's at current tuition rate. And we know that those are going to change. So we have the opportunity here to help ourselves to provide more revenue. Okay, this is a great number here. This is a great number. ULM, along with the other regional institutions and universities, have never been looked at as a school who's producing graduates. We know we've produced them, but the fact is we've had a large number of dropouts. This is being, this is changing. As you see the 13 numbers, we're over 40% now in graduation rate. A 10% change in uh, five years. That's amazing. So yes, yeah. This is a difficult number to move, as you know, because you talk about a first-time, full-time freshman. When they enter the university, their clock starts running. And six years from that point is when their graduation rate is measured. So this is a critical number because in Baton Rouge, this number is scrutinized quite a bit as to what's happening. Now, we're starting to see changes. You know, we got out of uh, open admissions during those periods of time. The, 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 the positive thing is, over the last two to three falls, we've had these improving uh, academically prepared students. And that is, that's going to help this number as well as our retention. It's going to help us as far as time to completion. But we need everyone's help in order to keep that number moving. If we can achieve a 45% graduation rate, we will be as high as most of the research institutions in the state, except for LSU. So we're close. And I think the more of these data that we can begin to show as to what's transpiring at this small university in Northeast Louisiana, the more uh, quality students we'll recruit and the more attention we'll get for those uh, within the region as well as uh, internationally. This is kind of a little look at the, the budget. And you've seen this chart before, I've presented it. Uh, last year we had 27.6 million in state funds. This year we have 26.4. Okay, why is there a decline? Well, there was $1.2 million given to us last year. That was one-time money. That money was taken away this year. Now, what is not included in here as yet is WISE funding because it's not been distributed. It's not been, uh, but we do have, through the efforts of our, our legislators, we did, we know we're getting $1 million for our pharmacy program. Um, that has not been added because it, it may very well, we don't know yet uh, where they want us to put it and show it in our budget. So from the pure perspective of what our budget shows right now, our um, tuition is up about 7.3 percent, and you hear, well, why at 10 percent? Well, you got part-time students in there and so forth that bring that number down a little bit. And then, as you can see, we're up 4.6 percent uh, overall this year from last year. That's the first time we've had a positive change in, what, five or six years. So that's exciting from my perspective. Uh, of course, 1.3 million increase in mandated cost. It continues to take a, a bite out of our budgets. Um, and that's technically almost a third of the new money we're receiving. This one is one I hope everyone will keep at the forefront of their, their thoughts. In 0809, when this budget crisis began, the, the economics turned down, the state was providing us 65% uh, of our money, and the students were providing 35. This year, that trend has reversed. If you remember the other day, I said that our students are now paying seven of every $10 that we make. Well, I fibbed a little bit. It's $6.50 of every 10. But the fact remains, that is very significant. That's why it's important for us to continue to recruit the best and continue to retain them. If we don't do that, you know, we will not continue to be successful. 
So the efforts on retention, the, you know, I told the new uh, employees yesterday in orientation, I said it doesn't take a lot. If you see a student wandering around lost, help them. You know, a smile, a kind word, you know, goes a long way because you're all authority figures. And when they see you, they see you as an authority figure. And if they know they can talk to you, it goes a long way to them staying here and being successful. So, you know, when you look at a student on this campus, you remember that $6.50 of every $10 that you earn comes from that student. You know, that is a perspective I want everybody to keep. I certainly do. And, you know, the reality is it does not appear this is going to change anytime soon. So the institutions that do the best job at recruiting, retaining, and making that student feel comfortable while giving them a good education are going to be the universities that remain and grow. And we're going to be one of those universities. Uh, restricted funds, you remember we talked about this where we've had to go into our restricted funds over the years. We restored some of those this year. So we're putting money back in. If you remember health sciences, particularly in nursing, we had to use restricted funds to, to fund that department to keep it going. Uh, we're starting to put some money back. This year there's about 4.1 from those restricted funds, but it's down uh, from 4.6 a year ago. And as things get better, we, we hope to restore those because those are our safety nets if times, if we have a dip. A strategic plan update that we talked about a little bit last year, the reorganization has provided some cost savings, distance learning, and let me go back to that, that significant cost savings. Um, you know, when we say that, don't feel as though we just took it and stuck it away in a hole somewhere. Uh, it's the result of new faculty being brought in, new staff. So we reinvested that into the university. Distance learning, we talked about EULM. Athletics, you know, generating more private funds, that certainly happened. Um, this Wi-Fi network has been expanded in our residence halls because it was a big issue with our students that they could not get uh, service in that it was fast enough. And uh, Steve Richters and uh, Chance Epinette and his staff, they worked to to just totally change that Wi-Fi network as well as the students' uh, cable services to eliminate one of the little irritants that students and residents had. Um, cloud services were implemented. Uh, the university, when, when Walker burned, there was a real fear that had it gone another 10 or 15 minutes, we'd have lost all of our data systems. Um, and we would have really been in trouble. Uh, as some of you know, we were out of uh, internet and email and so forth for about a day when that happened. And we realized how dangerous it can be if we lost those records. So uh, Steve Richters worked with a firm. We now are backing up our data on the cloud. Uh, I think we're the first university in the state that we're aware of that's doing that. So we have a redundancy plan. Our data is secure. And uh, revised online assessment and evaluation system, and I'm sure we'll be hearing more of that later. SOAR, we talked about SOAR a little bit. I'm not going to say much more than I told you um, uh, uh, at the respective faculty and staff luncheons, but, you know, scholarships, opportunities for faculties, athletic enhancement, and, of course, hopefully the renovation of this facility as well as the field house, which we feel is going to be a reality real soon. Um, this campaign puts everything back into what means something on this campus, and that is the faculty and the students. The scholarships that's being provided, as well as what our foundation is providing to our students that are coming in, those best and brightest, are making a difference. And I appreciate the foundation's efforts for that. Um, again, you'll have the faculty staff appeal coming up. As I told everyone, give what you can. If you can't give anything, that's fine. But if you can give a dollar a month or five dollars a month, whatever you can, We'd like to have a participation of 80%, so when we go outside the campus, we can tell private donors that our campus is, is participating at a very high level. Uh, once again, these folks that you know, or you may know, or you'll get to know, are uh, chairing the, uh, the faculty staff leadership team on the SOAR campaign on campus. So 
you see them coming, please don't run away. Okay, little calendar of events coming up. Convocation, August 20th. Hopefully you'll participate. That's always uh, an exciting time. Um, wait, what do we have here? Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Camo Wild. Hello, Warhawk fans. This is Athletic Director Brian Wickstra. And Head Coach Todd Berry. Come watch your Warhawks at 6 p.m. on August the 28th play the Demon Deacons of Wake Forest University. Not only is this a special night because it's the first Camo Out in Malone Stadium, it's the first Camo Out in college football. Every fan in attendance will receive a Warhawk Camo Out t-shirt. Warhawk fans, be ready because the hunt begins on August the 28th. Okay. Well, I don't know quite what to say about that, <laughs> but it's, uh, it's fun, it's getting a lot of attention, it is the only one. You know, information like this is getting our brand out. That's what it's all about. We have to get our brand out. The more the people that know about us, the more people will join us. And anyone who wants to help Brian with his shotgun is welcome to stay afterwards. <laughs> I, I kind of scolded his staff, I said, you know, you could have given the guy an automatic. He would at least not have had to do all of this mechanism with it. But thank you, Brian, for what y'all are doing. Uh, homecoming, September 22nd to the 27th. There'll be a lot of events. Get involved. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. We always have returning alums on campus. Make them feel comfortable. Uh, welcome them back. Uh, before I go on, I, didn't, I, did, I failed to do something. I want all the new faculty and staff who are coming aboard this semester, please stand and let these, this group recognize you. It's, I don't know about you, but it's a good feeling to see people standing that they're coming aboard and people standing to walk out. Um, we're stable. No, we're happy about that. Um. All right, I guess that's enough of that. Let's see, um, Lindsay, I'm not sure what we did here. Okay. Again, I can't say enough about what you've done during these very tough times. Uh, I'm not sure we're out of the, the woods, but I think we're well on our way. And I think these strategies we're putting in that's been put in over the last three, four years are starting to show, uh, show us some benefits, and I think we'll just continue to add on those, but we need you. Um, I guess one little thing, uh, someone said, you know, are you going to give us any good news? And I hope I've given you some good news today, you know, but I, I will say this that within the current budget, we have planned for some pay adjustments. And uh, we don't know yet, you know, a lot is based upon final enrollment figures, how many are full-time and everything. Uh, but we have every intention of some adjustment being uh, made this year, and hopefully b before the end of the year. And more details will come over the next couple months. So you deserve it. I'm sorry we won't be able to give you a lot, lot more, but I think it's going to be, uh, much better than we've seen. Okay, questions. Anybody have any questions? I'd love to answer them. No? Got one? No? Okay, well, I guess we'll just go and have some cookies and punch. And thank you all again for everything you do for ULM.